Um, all right, so hi everyone. My name is Carly Ziegler. I'm a member of the Shalik Lab. Um, and generally, we're interested in using genomic technologies and computational science to understand how cells differ within health and disease. Um, and so my image is also obviously a little bit different from everyone else's in that it actually represents the mathematical relationships between individual cells and didn't actually use a camera at any point. Um, and so I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, so shown here are two complex multicellular organisms, because my parents are on, in the audience. Um, and for us to function as happy and healthy, uh, it requires an amazing coordination between distinct but interacting systems. A complex organism can be divided into different parts, so it can be progressively teased apart into organs and tissues, and the fundamental unit of all of us is the single cell. And so trillions of individual single cells dynamically work together to keep us healthy and can malfunction and cause disease. Critically, all of the cells in, say, your gut, which is pictured here, are not the same generic gut cell, but they actually are comprised of a huge diversity of cells, each performing unique roles to enable the emergent function of the tissue. And so one of the greatest puzzles in modern biology and uh, genetics is how does all of this diverse behavior arise when every single organism uh, originates from a single cell and has the same DNA? And so one of my favorite very cheesy analogies for this is to consider a piano. And so it, although it has a defined set of keys, the keys that it's played with and when they're played gives immensely diverse chords and melodies. And actually, in principle, this is how complex multicellular organisms work. Um, each cell in your body may have the same set of DNA and genes pictured here. Instead of 88, there are 20,000 of them. And that set of genes can be played or interpreted in different ways and combinations. And they do this through a critical step, which is the creation of messenger RNA, which is aptly named, or mRNA here. Um, it's aptly named as it serves as a molecular language that cells use to instruct their appearance and behavior. By analogy to melodies or pieces of music, unique cells will express different combinations of mRNA at different times. And so our lab works to, under, to create technologies to measure the mRNA of individual cells as it provides a window into the cell's current role within the organism as well as its trajectory and its past. And so finally, we're interested in studying the changes that occur in single cells in different diseases. And uh, as Erica mentioned, the most important part of any experiment is having a really good control. And so it's impossible to understand how changes may occur in disease without understanding how the system behaves when it's healthy. And so we quickly realized that our field was missing this critical component and a very comprehensive catalog of what mRNA looked like in single, sort, single cells in healthy organisms. And so our first step was to create as holistic and comprehensive of a picture of health as we could. We isolated cells from different um, organs in many different healthy systems. And we analyzed them using a technology that was developed between our lab and the Love Lab here at the Koch, where single cells are trapped with individual beads that are engineered to record the mRNA of each single cell, yielding measurements from thousands of cells at once. And so uh, from our first draft, we've already created data from over 100,000 cells and 20,000 genes. And what this amounts is to an, inc an incredible abundance of information. And so the ne next major challenge in our field is how do you even start to make sense of that much information and, that, and even visualize it? And so that brings me to my image outside. So what we did was we took all of this data, um, represented each little point here, if you can squint and see them, are individual single cells. Each point is colored by the tissue of origin, so gray for your brain, pink for your lungs, and so on. And what we do next is we apply some complex math to instruct the cells to do something quite simple, which is just to organize themselves in space according to the similarities in their transcriptomes or their gene expression. So cells that are placed that are more similar are placed closer together. Cells that are more dissimilar are placed close, further apart. And so I actually took snapshots of this as it iterated along. So, um, and you see slowly as this progresses, some order begins to kind of emerge out of this chaos. Each of these individual clusters of cells, clusters of points, represent cells that are expressing a common repertoire of genes. And so, flash forward a couple of days later after running that until steady state, was my image that was presented outside. And so currently we're really excited by what we're uncovering just by understanding this healthy foundational data set on its own. And if I had more time, you can come ask me about each of these little clusters outside. Um, but next what we're doing is we're utilizing this as a critical control to understand how this picture may shift in disease. And so we hope that these approaches to understand how cells battle or succumb to infectious diseases and cancer, we can achieve a deeper understanding of the mechanisms of disease and motivate better ways to engineer healing. So 
With that, I'd like to thank uh, Alex Shayla, who's my, been an awesome mentor, and Shana Carroll, who was instrumental to a lot of this work with me, as well as our wonderful collaborators in the Keen and the Love Labs, and also this awesome forum for art and science.